So we're celebrating uh, Women's Entrepreneurship Week this Yay. week. <laughs> Instead of reading a, a boring bio, I'm going to ask you the first question. Where are you from? And you know, how did uh, the, or where are you from? And what was your entrepreneurial background, if any? Parents, friends, sure. uncles. Yeah, whatever. yeah. So. Where do you think I'm from? India. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nailed it, nailed it, my uncle. Okay, so yes, I am from India. I was born and raised in Mumbai. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard about Mumbai or known about it. It's an extremely fast-paced city. It's like New York meets Los Angeles. So I grew up in like 300 miles per hour every single day. So that's where I'm from. Uh, I came to the U.S. in 2005 to get my master's um, about my entrepreneurial background. So I come from a family where I was raised by an entrepreneur. My dad started his company in 1984. Uh, it's a healthcare uh, equipment manufacturer. And I have seen him love what he does. I have seen him talk to me about a couple of critical points every single day. Dinner table conversations were around, number one, make people's life better. Because that's what design is all about. You think about people doing things a certain way, and then you design and you redesign it on how do you change it. The second part was do something that you love. Because if you truly, truly do something that you love, that's not going to be a work and a life and a balance. That whole concept of work-life balance, according to me, is very passe. When you do what you love, that's your life, and everything else supports it and then surrounds it. So I grew up in that kind of a background of passion, innovation, and uh, entrepreneurship. Yeah, that's wonderful. That parallels my life a little bit, too, but we won't go there. We will, we will talk about that later. Talk uh, yeah. about that later. That's right. So next thing is, uh, how, how how did you get here, mm -hmm. and how did the immigrant experience actually inform your uh, sure. entrepreneurial journey? So I got here on a British Airways flight. No, I'm okay. joking. <laughs> but, but I did. Um, so uh, my background is I am an uh, industrial engineer. So product design was my uh, main specialization. I loved that part of it but I hated the engineering part of it. Um, I wish I could just design and just you know, create products, but you also have to manufacture them. Uh, so I'm an extreme nonconformist. What that means is that if the whole world is moving in a certain direction, naturally, my brain and my body does not want to move in that direction. So after completing that engineering degree, I kind of wanted to rebel and not wanted to do what others were doing, so I got a teaching degree. And I got an early childhood teaching degree, so different from industrial engineering. And I loved it. I worked as a teacher for three years. I was creating classes and lessons, but I wanted to come to the US, so I came here to get my master's, went to Michigan uh, for my uh, MBA, and that's how I actually got here. University of Michigan, or Michigan State? University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, yes, yeah, that's that is, that is correct. School, I think. Yes, and they have a big game. Yeah, yeah. The Notre Dame Michigan game, yeah. So, that, so my next question is how did that education and your experience at yeah. the University of Michigan yeah. actually help you sure. or influence you? Yeah. So, it was actually fabulous. Like, I truly attribute a big part of creating this company or whatever companies I've created and the start of the journey to University of Michigan. And within the university, they, like you have the Kaplan Institute here, they had a Sam Zell Yuri Entrepreneurial Institute, which was created for students who were interested in entrepreneurship. And I irritated the hell out of the people who worked there. Even today when I meet them, I'm on their bored now, but even when I meet them now, they're like, we used to be so scared of you. Because I, if I had a question, I need an answer. And so my journey started there. So my two years of my MBA, I spent in creating this company. And they let me do that. And the, the cornerstone of that program is, is action-based learning. So my learning was about creating a business. Business is not just about finding a job or your next career move. Business is about creating something that 
you know, others have value and use for and they're paying you for it and you create that change accordingly. So it really impacted my entrepreneurial journey because it gave me the opportunity to select the classes that I want, go to these kind of workshops. My first customer actually came because I sat in a workshop like this, went to the speaker and boom, he was a retired superintendent of Detroit Public Schools. And I didn't know who he was, I just landed in this country. So it was these kind of opportunities that started the journey and I just went on not stopping after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've had these discrete experiences, right? At home, um, mm -hmm. Germany, Michigan, so yeah. far. Who have, you been, who have been some of your influencers, yeah. mentors, or your um, role models? Sure, yeah. Partners, maybe. Yeah, my mentors and role models have actually evolved over the years. Some of them are people that I know personally. Some of them are icons that all of us know, and I read about them. I see what they do. So it's, of course, it started with my father because he was an entrepreneur. But then as I started reading business books, a lot of those authors became influencers. Mm -hmm. Jim Collins or, you know, uh, reading about, uh, you know, the early, I'm dating myself, so, <laughs> but a lot of those early stage business books that all of us read, Good to Great, Built to Last, you know, uh, and so many other books. So, and then, it came to, when I came to this country, it was Sam Zell. I got a scholarship from Sam Zell, a grant from Sam Zell, had an opportunity to meet him, and just meeting other entrepreneurs. When you meet other entrepreneurs and you see their passion and you hear about their stories like you're hearing mine, it gives you a flavor into how they think. When I raised my first round of funding, and we've now done about three rounds of funding, when I raised my first round of funding from my investors, my lead investor is uh, Andrew Bloom. They're one of the leading uh, um, capital investors here in Chicago, learning from them, learning from my other investors, learning from my professors. So along the way, there have been many. The high growth entrepreneurs that I really have been influenced by have been Jeff Bezos, I think starting with an idea and playing that never ending infinite game of your business. Are you creating a product or are you actually evolving a market? Those are the kind of entrepreneurs that have been influencers of mine. Harvard Schultz is another one. How do you create a socially conscious company? My company is a socially conscious for-profit company. So how do you actually think about improving and increasing stakeholder value and not sh just shareholder value is are the kind of people that I've followed over the years. Yeah, that's great. So it yeah. sounds like you've had a lot of success so far, but my experience is with success comes some <laughs> trials and tribulations. Yeah. So can you give us just an example or two perhaps of, of some, some of, some of the, the struggles? struggles yeah. And maybe how you overcame Yeah. Them. So on your entrepreneurial path and your journey, and I'm sure you've read about it. I'm not the first person saying it. You all look, we all look at a company when the company is here. But when it started here, from the journey from the start to when you start noticing it, there's a lot of drama. There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of scrambled eggs that goes on there. We don't see that. We see this. But have we struggled and have I failed? Oh my gosh, every single day. But I never ever looked at it as a struggle or oh my gosh, what are people going to think that I'm going to fail? I, I'm like an energizer bunny, I just keep going. To me, that's not a struggle or a failure, it's a learning. And if you're not failing and struggling, you're not taking risk. And if you're not taking risk, you're not an entrepreneur. So it's all linked together we crave failure, I actually do. I'm constantly experimenting. I'm launching something and it can either have an A answer or a B answer. If I think it's an A and great, if B, then my brain goes into analyzing why was it B and what can I do? So there have been several. Um, one that really comes to my mind is after the initial product launch and after we had initial traction in the market and the customer was repurchasing our product again and again, the transition from going to a founder to a CEO. It's actually a very difficult and important transition. A lot of founders are able to transition and some are not, and they are both okay. But for me, that transition was interesting because you have to go from building to selling 
to systemizing processes, to scaling, to managing a company of continuous growth. That was number one. Number two is fundraising. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs love what they do. They love building those products. They have a lot of passion for it. And then comes this whole thing about fundraising that you're like, oh my gosh, like seriously, you don't believe in me? How do you not believe in me? I believe in me. But guess what? People don't believe in you. So going through that transition of fundraising where somebody who's sitting with capital and you have to sell your dream and story and then prove it with your numbers that yes, you can make an impact, it's not a challenge, but it's a new skill set. And I think a lot of people give up there, and it's just a matter of failing and learning and just keep on moving. So those are two that really come to my mind. That's great. Yeah. Actually, there's a few entrepreneurs in the city, and, and maybe I'm like that too. We love starting things, but we don't like actually to manage things. And that's a, that's a, and it's a character trait. Seriously, it's, it's, it's really nothing wrong with it. A lot of people, that's all they do. They're serial entrepreneurs. They'll start, build a little, sell. They go back, they start, they'll probably, when WhatsApp sold to Facebook for whatever, 59 billion, sorry, whatever that valuation was, they were just 10 or 15 people, that's it. So it really doesn't matter what you do and whether you're scaling the company, you gotta decide for yourself what kind of an entrepreneur you are and then stick to it. Don't try to build your journey based on what somebody else's journey is. Like it's your journey. Makes sense? Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yeah. So this wasn't your first venture, right? So what no. was your very first venture and what happened? Yeah. So, so technically this was my first venture because I started it first, but I really didn't take this seriously until 2014, 2015. So I was just building the product. This was one of my side ventures. So I wouldn't really call this my first venture. My first venture was a chain of preschools in India. Uh, my second was a chain of restaurants in India. Uh, and this is my third one. In all three of them, the common chain has been experiences and service. I love to give experiences to people and I love to watch them enjoy it like a theater. And I just love the happiness and the joy that comes with people using my products. And, and all three of my businesses have been around live experiences, live preschools, live restaurants, and then live streaming instruction to K-12 schools and what we do now. So that was the first venture. Across with my first venture, what I learned was the most important thing that you can do is invest in people, okay? People think about investing in technology. Who builds technology? People, okay? So the learning that I have was if you invest in the right kind of people, people will build products and people will drive sales. And to be a successful high growth entrepreneur, you need to have both. A lot of people succeed in making products, but they do not succeed in driving sales. Then you gotta think about building a product and selling it off, and then go build another product. But if you are the kind of entrepreneur who wants to build product and continue to grow your company, you gotta have people who can do both, and then you grow and then you manage that skill set. Yeah, that's, um, boy, that hits home. <laughs> So you said this was a, a project that you first started. Yeah. What inspired you to do that? And were you in school at the time? Yeah. Or, so maybe that's a little relevant for our students here. Since Absolutely. Students, some of them are doing projects. Yes. Now, how many of you came to the US to go to IIT here? OK. Very, very few of you. So I came to the US, went to Ann Arbor, Imagine I came, from, I came from an urban city, and then I was in Ann Arbor. And I was like, oh, OK, I cannot walk here. <laughs> like, I, I need to get a car to go everywhere. And I love Ann Arbor, please don't get me wrong, but, but it was a shock. And the first month, I wanted to go back. To me, football is your soccer, and I didn't know your football was my rugby. So that was a big shock. So I went to the first football game and I was like, oh, this is rugby. They're like, no, this is football. <laughs> anyway, then there was the concept of happy hour. Again, we don't understand that, right? <laughs> then there was this whole thing of talking about sports and this and that. It doesn't come naturally to us and that's a big cultural shock. And I came here a decade or more back. So it was, now you have access to everything. But at that point of time, you didn't. I literally called up my mom in the first one month and I said, I'm coming back. 
and like nobody likes me here i don't understand anything this is not my kind of town i'm coming back and here's what she told me she said give it 6 months and if you feel the same after 6 months i will i will i will come here and get you and bring you back and trust me in 2 months i found my home and i found my home that's 15 minutes yep, that's perfect okay um, i found my home in the in the first project that i had so i joined the junior achievement program and i started voluntarily teaching in k12 schools the first shock i had was there was a low income population in the us you do not hear that when you are in india you do not come your thinking and approximately 40 to 50% of the current k12 population is low income there are 100000 schools in the us 56000 have low income students in these low income schools when i started teaching there in detroit and ann arbor there were no teachers the kids were sitting on a computer playing a curriculum game or watching a video coming from asia where you stretch your hands and you find a high quality teacher that was a big shock that everything you learn is in your four walls of an institution without less access to good talent of teachers outside so i was shocked and i was sad to see that these kids were sitting in these classrooms these kids who are supposed to be receiving an education and what they were receiving was technology so that was how my project started webex had just launched at that point of time i used the university webex access and i started teaching myself online and one thing led to another and this company was my internship project that's how i started i went and i made a deal with the dean that please let me do this and then that's how it kind of started so it was amazing because this is the time that you have when you are in a university where you have access to different campuses and amazing professors and researchers that you can go and you can ask questions to once you are out of campus you're on your own so if you're thinking of starting something don't get bogged down by classes and i have to do my assignment we all have to do that maybe party a little less drink a little less go to a less little less happy hours you can do all of that later on and use that time to really focus and build something and use the resources that what nick has just said out you guys have some amazing re resources look at this building this building fosters creativity and that's how this is built this is built to foster design creativity and and it's amazing yeah Thanks. So to keep us on time, I'm yep. going to let you get on to the next part, but I've got a couple questions that in case there are no questions in the q and I'll ask a few more. Absolutely. Great. Let's get started. Okay.